Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Leftist Gabriel Boric wins Chile's presidency. Protest marks three years since Sudanese revolution. U.S. airstrikes in Middle East deeply flawed, says report. And hospitality workers launch indefinite strike in Cambodia. In our first story, progressive frontrunner Gabriel Boric is said to be Chile's next president. The former student leader won Sunday's runoff election with 55.8% of the votes. Boris defeated far-right candidate Jose Antonio Cast, who secured 44.1% of the vote share. Over 8 million Chileans voted in the December 19th election. While voting proceeded without any major incidents, serious concerns were raised about the lack of public transportation. Dozens of buses were reportedly impounded in what many considered an attempt to suppress voter participation. Boris's campaign also noted a 50% decrease in buses in Santiago and similar reductions in cities like Valparaiso and Rancagua. As the results were announced on Sunday evening, massive celebrations broke out in Santiago. Boric belongs to the Approved Dignity Coalition and has promised to address key demands raised during the 2019 social outburst protests. This includes increased state spending on services like healthcare, progressive taxes, and a public alternative to the current private pension system. Boric has also demanded the legalization of abortion and rights of the LGBTQ plus community. He has also pledged to reform the notorious Carabinero police force, which has been repeatedly accused of gross human rights violations. Boris's victory has come at a crucial time as Chile's constitutional convention is in the process of drafting a new text. This will replace the exclusionary Pinochet era document, which does not recognize indigenous peoples. Boris has backed a new constitution and will oversee a referendum on it in 2022. Next, we go to Sudan, where hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets of Khartoum on December 19th. The protests were the latest in the march of millions uprising against the October 25th military coup. The day also marked three years since the December revolution, which overthrew dictator Omar al-Bashir. Beyond the capital, demonstrations were also held in places like Omdurman, Port Sudan, Eddain, Dongola, and Atbara. Security forces had already blocked all major roads leading to the airport and army headquarters before Sunday's protest. Bridges connecting to the capital to the major cities of Omdurman and Bari were also sealed off. While protesters were still able to reach Khartoum, they were attacked with heavy tear gas. People chanted, the people are stronger and retreat is impossible as they marched to the presidential palace. Protesters had traveled from other states, including North Kordofan and Gezirar, to the demonstration. As the protest neared the presidential palace, security forces fired live ammunition and tear gas. According to Sudan's health ministry, at least 123 people were injured on Sunday. The Central Committee of Sudanese Doctors reported that a 28-year-old man had been killed during the protest in Khartoum. The organization has stated that 45 people have been killed in the anti-coup protests so far. Sudan's revolutionary forces, including the Sudanese Professionals Association, have remained firm in their demand for a complete civilian democratic rule. They have been mobilizing under the slogan, no partnership, no negotiation, and no legitimacy. Protesters have rejected the agreement, which reinstated Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok in November. Up next, over 1,000 civilians were killed by U.S. air attacks in the Middle East due to deeply flawed intelligence and faulty targeting, says the latest report. These findings are part of an investigation by the New York Times. The report is based on confidential Pentagon documents containing over 1,300 reports of civilian casualties. The Times has stated that the number of civilian deaths had been vastly undercounted by at least several hundreds. Moreover, none of the records of civilian deaths contained an admission of wrongdoing. For instance, 120 farmers and villagers on the outskirts of Tokhar in Syria were killed in an airstrike in July 2016. However, reports at the time said that 85 fighters had been killed. Another attack took place in Ramadi in Iraq in 2015 after a man was seen dragging an unknown heavy object 
to an Islamic State site. Upon review, the object was found to be the body of a child killed in the attack. A more recent example was the US drone strike in Kabul, Afghanistan, which killed 10 civilians. The Pentagon has announced that no one will be punished for the attack. The Times report states that the poor or inadequate surveillance footage often led to deadly targeting of civilians. Many civilian survivors were left with disabilities. However, compensation payments were made in less than 12 cases. U.S. airstrikes grew significantly in the final years of the Obama administration. The claim was that these were precision operations which could keep civilian casualties to a minimum. The Times report found over 50,000 airstrikes were conducted in Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria over five years with much less precision. And for our final story, we go to Cambodia where over 1,300 hospitality workers in Phnom Penh have launched an indefinite strike. Workers at the Nagavol Casino and Hotel have been on strike despite threats from hotel management and local authorities. The strike, which began on December 18, is organized by the Labor Rights Supported Union of Khmer Employees of Naga World, or the LRSU. Workers have been fighting against arbitrary mass layoffs imposed by the management in April this year. 1,329 workers were laid off in a single day, including the entire union leadership of the LRSU. Strikers are demanding the reinstatement of 365 of these workers, who the union leadership claim were laid off illegally, mostly for their union activities. They have also demanded proper severance pay for others who have been laid off and better wages for the nearly 2,000 existing workers. In the meanwhile, the workers are also facing looming pressure from authorities. According to reports, a December 16 order by a Phnom Penh court has deemed the strike and the demonstration held at the Naga World Complex as illegal. But the striking workers were only notified of this order late in the evening of December 18, hours after the strike began. In the meanwhile, last week, Cambodia's Labour Ministry had also stated the union to remove some of its demands. In a joint statement by 59 organizations, including trade unions, social movements and rights organizations from across Cambodia have condemned the authorities' attempts to undermine the strike. The letter also insisted that the authorities and Naga Corp that owns Naga World not use the legal system, must not be used as a tool to silence workers' voices and respect the international treaties on labor rights that it is signatory to. The Cambodian government has in the past attracted international scrutiny for its crackdown on labor groups and trade unions. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Yeah,